All right, now we're getting into the 330 slate now. Starting off with number one, Oregon at Michigan. This game is on CBS. And the storyline to know is pretty simple. It's the defending national champs against the new number one team in college football right now. Uh, and Oregon, I mentioned before, Michigan won the national championship for national title for their program. So Michigan is the defending champs, but they've looked like a shell of their prior selves, Dylan. They already have three losses this year. They lost three games in the previous three years combined. Two of those three losses came in the college football playoff. They only suffered one loss in the regular season over the last three years, and now they have three uh, so far this year. So it's been a rough go for, for Michigan lately. Oregon, number one in the uh, AP poll for the first time since 2012. That was Chip Kelly's final year as head coach of Oregon. That is the last time that Oregon was number one in the country. They started off slow, but now they are clicking in all three phases, and they've beaten three currently ranked teams in Ohio State, Boise State, and Illinois. Still, you're in the big house. It's going to be a great environment. It's one of the biggest stadiums in the world with a great fan base. They got to be careful against Michigan, who still has an elite defense um, as well. So, listen, I'm not saying that Michigan's going to ultimately win this game. We'll get into our predictions at the very end of it. But this is not a game for Oregon to just look over and be like, oh, we'll be fine in this game. No, you, you have a team with a winning pedigree and, and a bunch of talent, especially on defense, on that defensive line. That, that if Look, if they play it right and you let them run the ball on offense and get it, get to where they want to go and play the style of game that they want to play, that you know they can beat anybody. I think Michigan's defense can keep them tight in any game. In Oregon, we've seen at times this year where they're not as physical maybe as you thought they were. So um, it, it's an interesting road game in Oregon. It's probably their toughest test left as far as um, the rest of the regular season. And, and I think they have the clearest path to the playoff right now since they've already beaten Ohio State and a couple other ranked teams like you mentioned. Yeah, it's either Michigan or, or Washington, honestly, who beat Michigan, right? Those are two of the arguments. But yeah, it, it really is probably the toughest test left that Oregon has so far this year. And Don, you have the Oregon offense in this one. So what should we be looking out for? Uh, excuse me, you have the Michigan offense in this one. What should we be looking out for the Wolverines in the ball? Um, I, I So I just, we've had this thing all year where they have been, they have been changing up quarterbacks and going back and yeah. forth and figuring out who's working we had davis warren earlier in the year then we went to alex orgy and basically the permanent wildcat sort of thing then they went to jack tuttle and that was a struggle and now and now tuttle has um what medical medically retired now yeah. right um uh, which which is obviously unfortunate. You'd like to see him finish the season, but no, I mean, it's good for him to make the best decision for his own health. And now we're back to Davis Warren, who last week, honestly, played the best game of the season by a Michigan quarterback. And it's it speaks to the standard where we are that he threw for 120 yards in that game. And that's considered yeah. probably the best game of um, any game this season by a Michigan quarterback. Look, it's back to where we were at the beginning of the season. When we talked about this team, even back when we were previewing the Texas game, where it's, look, they need to run the ball. They're going to find Colson Loveland somewhere in the passing game, move him around the formation. And last week, they really kind of tilted the momentum um, of the Michigan State game that they won by a touchdown with some trick plays, right? Sharon Moore threw some fancy stuff in there. Got Alex Orgy going in the Wildcat. I felt like we were back in like the first three weeks of the season <laughs> where it was like, oh, okay, we're back to like this. And we got Alex Orgy's the change up and Davis Warren makes an occasional throw and Colson Loveland. So I think it's, it's the same Michigan offense really that we've seen all season. Uh, and I think it just gets summed up when you talk about they're 121st in passing grade, right? And they're using their back to their opening day starter again. They have the, the fifth fewest yards per game uh passing yards per game in the country the fourth fewest yards per attempt i, I mean it's just i think i think they're second worst in epa per pass and only kennesaw state is below yeah, yeah. so uh, it's it kind of is a microcosm big win bad. over liberty though. big win over liberty big win yeah. over liberty yeah. uh, but uh, no i mean it's just it, it's just about michigan i mean again last week it felt like a positive step and it was and then you look at the box score and you go oh they threw for 120 yards i, <laughs> I mean that's kind of plus Donovan Edwards threw a touchdown um, also, which, uh, but again, QB1, Donovan Edwards. I, yeah. He might be. Um, <laughs> just, it, it's just, it's been a struggle. And, and if they if they can find, if they can build on last week and find any sort of balance, cool, because you're not going to be a team like Oregon one, one dimensionally. You, no. You're just not going to do it. So if Warren can build on that, that's a positive outing, and he could have another one in this game. And obviously, they're going to lean on the run game and the defense and try to keep it low scoring, cool. But it's, it's obviously, no matter who the quarterback is, it's been a struggle for Michigan to throw the ball all season. It really has been, honestly. And the outside of the ball, it's. Can Oregon's offensive line hold up in this game? So the Oregon offense overall has been 
really good in a lot of areas this year, right? They're, they have a top 25 passing grade in the country, top 25 rushing grade in the country, top 25 receiving grade in the country. Dylan Gabriel, according to DraftKings Sportsbook, is tied with Travis Hunter for the best odds to win the Heisman Trophy right now. By all accounts, Oregon has elite players at all the skill positions. Dylan Gabriel, Tez Johnson, Evan Stewart, Jordan James. They got elite players everywhere, right? The one area, offensively, where Oregon's had some issues is along the offensive line. So far this year, Oregon's had kind of an average offensive line. They're right now 69th in the country in offensive line grade at 68.2. They have really good tackles. Josh Connerly Jr., Johnny Cornelius, their tackle duo is 23rd in the nation in PFF grade. The biggest issue has been on the interior offensive line for the Ducks. Their starting three of Marcus Harper, Yapani Lalulu, and Nashad Strother is 110th among interior offensive lines in PFF grade this year. That is a major issue because Michigan's defensive line has the best pair of defensive tackles in college football in Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant. Both of those guys are top 10 prospects on PFF's big board right now for the 2025 NFL Draft. Mason Graham leads all power four defensive tackles with an 89.1 grade this year. And it's not just the defensive tackles. I mentioned before that they have great offensive tackles, Oregon does. They still got to deal with Michigan's edge defenders, right? Josiah Stewart just won our uh, Defensive Player of the Year award for uh, for college football. He's been the highest graded defensive player in college football. Michigan's defensive line as a whole is the highest graded defensive line in college football at 92.1. They lead the nation in pass rushing grade at 91.6 and tied for second in run defense grade at 90.3. So Oregon's offensive line, if they do their job, Dylan Gabriel and those weapons I just talked about, they should tee off on Michigan's secondary because right now Michigan is 79th in coverage grade and superstar corner Will Johnson is questionable for Saturday after missing last week against Michigan State with a lower leg injury. If Michigan wants any chance of making this game a close game, as low scoring as possible, They need to do that, right? They need the defensive line to be the most dominant unit on the field against what's been kind of an average Oregon offensive line. And even more so, just diving even even more into it, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham, they got to be the two best players on the field. But they do have an opportunity against what's been a well below average interior offensive line for Oregon. Yeah, no, I agree. And we've seen Michigan, even even through their losses, that defensive line has dominated week in and yeah. week out. Right? Think about their win over USC, even their loss to Washington. They were dominant, and just Washington got rid of the football before they could sack Will Rogers. So uh, it, it is one of the best, if not the best, defensive line in the country. And that's the number one problem when you're playing the Wolverines is you have to figure out if if or how you're going to block these guys, and if not, how you're going to avoid them, because they do cause a lot of problems inside. Absolutely. So, Dalton, ultimately, will Oregon go into the big house and prove why they're the number one team in the country, or will Michigan pull off what could be the biggest upset of the year? I think this is the last big step for Oregon towards the playoff, right? A, a, a road game against Michigan, who's got a great defense, who's a lot to handle in the trenches. But I, I think the formula for beating Michigan is pretty simple at this point. Don't let them get 300 yards rushing on the ground and get rid of the football. Even if you can't win the battle inside, get rid of the football in time so those guys just can't get sacks and really start pressuring the quarterback, right? I I don't have the updated number, but I know earlier in the year I was talking about opposing quarterbacks against Michigan were averaging a 2.4 second average time to throw. Get rid of the football because Michigan's coverage unit is not as good as it's been in past years, especially last year when it was historically great, right? And especially if Will Johnson is out, these Oregon receivers are going to have opportunities on the outside to make plays. We know how good Tez Johnson is. Evan Stewart's been coming on lately. I got some other guys who can make plays in space. I, I think I think Oregon makes a statement in this one. I've got Oregon 34-13. to 13. I just think at this point there is a pretty clear formula how to beat this Michigan team. Don't beat yourself. Don't turn the ball over. Get rid of the football if you're Dylan Gabriel. Don't hold the football and take sacks in this game and create negative plays. And I think Oregon will just be they'll, – they'll be just fine. Okay. Yeah, I got Oregon winning as well. And a little bit of a closer one. I got 30-17 to 17 in this one. I honestly don't – if Michigan had any sort of a competent passing attack – I think they'd have a shot in this game, honestly, with that defensive line against that offensive line. But unfortunately for their defensive line and their defense overall, it doesn't have a competent passing game right now. And I think Oregon ultimately prevails on the road and and shows why it's the number one team in college football with a uh, double-digit win over Michigan in the big house. 